that are going in the stool with us and then a little bit later you know we're going to stop for a washroom break we're going to stop in a place you know where uh, you can go to the washroom stretch your legs have a smoke or let's say get something to drink this place where we're going to stop is a very popular place because many people say they do the best piña colada from cuba you know in the most hotels they do piña colada but they normally do it with artificial flavor you know this place where we're going to stop they do it the national way you see the pineapple the coconut they do the cocktail without alcohol and then later you know you may add some rum on it or drink it virgin as they call it without alcohol after this washroom break we will continue on the way to havana i actually want tell you the details about our program now because I told you we have more people to pick up you know and if I tell you now later you will listen to the program twice so I'm going to leave you know a little bit forward you know as soon as we pick up the other clients you know I will explain to all of you you know our program for today but I can say that Havana is a beautiful city you know it's a capital city with more than two million inhabitants that oh. represents almost 20 percent of the Cuban population with a little bit more than 11 million people. Havana is a very special place to get in touch with the real Cuba. You know, Baradero is a nice place too, but Baradero is more a place, you know, to relax and work on your time. You know, with the nice beach resorts, you know, nice beach area. But let's say Havana is indeed the real Cuba. Now as we drive to Havana, we are going to be driving all along the coasts all along the Atlantic Ocean to the north of Cuba. Baradero is actually to the north of the province of Matanzas. You know, we can see here in the map, it's a peninsula here above. You know, and then let's say we'll be driving all along the coast up to Havana. To the north of Cuba, we always have the Atlantic Ocean. And to the south, we find the Caribbean Sea. The nicest beach areas in Cuba are located to the north, like Baradero, Guardalavaca, in the northeast. We also have beach areas here in the central part of Cuba, you know, to the south. I mean, uh, Ancon, Rancho Luna, but they are not the same quality. You know, the beach areas to the north are more popular. You know, to the south, it's more rocky, you know, good for the snorkeling, for the scuba diving. But you know, as a beach area, you know, to the north is much better. Cuba, as you see in the map, you know, is an archipel. There are more than 4,000 small islands all around Cuba. Most of them are very tiny and uninhabited. But many of them, you know, are with touristic importance, like this one here, to the north of the province of Ciego de Avila. There we have Cayo Coco, Cayo Santa Maria, you know, and these ones are becoming more popular, you know, as a big touristic destination. But that area has not been that exploited, you know, and is very virgin. But we can say that Baradero is by far, you know, the most popular touristic place in Cuba. Baradero, peninsula, 25 kilometers long, more than 50 hotels. It was uh, selected at the beginning of, uh, I mean, 2022 as the second most popular beach area in the whole world, according to TripAdvisor. Oh my God. And that's very important to us because tourism represents big source of income for Cuba. You know, now we are driving to this uh, small fishing village, which is called Boca de Camarioca. Boca de Camarioca is just three kilometers away from Varadero. So there are many people from here who work in Varadero at the different resorts. You know, it's a very nice place here. You know, uh, we can say that uh, fishing here is not only a way to make a living, it's like part of these people's culture. And every year here, they celebrate what they call the Rest Harbor Festival. That's a big party outdoors. They celebrate during the rest upper season. They actually um, go low fishing, you know, and they celebrate at the end of the day to see who could get the biggest rest upper. You know, um, 
Unfortunately, you know, in the last two years, you know, they haven't been able to celebrate this because of COVID restrictions. You know, but I think that maybe next year, you know, can be done again. That's a very popular party, not only for people from this area, but also for people from other close areas. So, I can tell you that uh, tourism actually in Cuba had to stop, you know, for uh, because of COVID, you know, for more than one year. Not only in Cuba, I mean all over the world, you know, life stops. And then let's say um, in Cuba, we developed five different vaccines against COVID. And more than 90% of the Cuban population was vaccinated against COVID. Through this, we could lower the numbers and become a safer destination. So we were able to open again to tourism, let's say after the big opening was November, let's say 2021. So in regular times in Cuba, we receive between three and four million visitors a year. You know, and a big percent of them, I would say around 40% of them would come from Canada. <laughs> Where most of you are coming from. Cuba and Canada are very close and the weather may be very different. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, let's say um, during the COVID, uh, restrictions you know there were no people coming to Cuba you know and um, last year you know we reached almost two million visitors that is actually lower than the regular standards you know but let's say now people are still trying to overcome after the crisis you know now with the war in Europe there is also an international tension you know and people are not traveling that much but we are actually um, let's say very positive about tourism in Cuba. That's why you could see that there are new hotels that we are working on. You could see as we were coming out of Varadero, you know, two new hotels that are almost ready. And most of this job was done during the COVID recession, you know, when tourism was stopped. During this period, you know, that the hotels were closed, you know, the staff at the hotels, you know, also tried to get the opportunity to, let's say, uh, we can say do restorations at the hotel, you know, to try to do things better, you know, for the future, you know, as things, let's say, made it possible. But let's say uh, now we are very optimistic about it, you know, and we think that this year, you know, we could reach, let's say, three million visitors again. You know, Baradero was not always as touristic as you can see now, that it's a place, you know, with more than 50 hotels. You know, at the beginning of the revolution in the early 60s, in Baradero there were only five hotels. The big development in tourism in Baradero came after 1990. You know, we can say that at that time Cuba became open to foreign investments and many new hotels were built. Now in Baradero we have 10 times the hotels that we, want, we once had. And we can say that, let's say, the airport where most of you landed was not the original Baradero airport either. You know, let's say the original one was at the very beginning of Baradero. You know, let's say when there were just a few hotels, so they had to build a bigger one in the 90s with the development of tourism. And that's at the moment the second most popular international airport in Cuba, only smaller than the one in, let's say, Havana or capital city. So today, as you can see, it's a nice day, sunny hot, you know, I hope it remains so. You know, we are now officially in Cuba in the, in the dry season. In Cuba, we don't divide our weather into four seasons like you do at home, you know, because we don't have that big temperature difference. You know, the average temperature in Cuba, 25 degrees. That's why we say that Cuba is like an everlasting summer. Mm -hmm. And then let's say uh, we divide our weather into just two seasons. The rainy season from May until October and the dry season now from November to April. In the rainy season, it's very hot and very humid. So in the afternoon, it usually gets cloudy and rains. You know, now in the dry season, it's very dry, you know. 
it hardly rains. It just can't rain when a cold front comes, normally coming from the north. It gets cloudy, it rains, and that normally means that it's going to get a little bit colder. But once the cold front continues, it gets sunny and hot again, like you can see today, for example. The biggest problem with the weather in Cuba is related to hurricanes. We have a hurricane season in the Caribbean from, let's say, uh, November, uh, sorry, from June until November. What happens? At that time, you know, it's very hot and very humid, and there are good conditions for the hurricanes to start. We never know how many hurricanes are coming or how bad they can be. We can just get prepared and see what happens. Some years we are lucky and we don't have any problems at all. But some years may be very, very bad. For example, last uh, hurricane season, we had a hurricane that made a lot of damage in Cuba. That was Hurricane Yan. I think it was in September, if I remember properly. You know, it was actually very bad. You know, it was devastating, especially here in Pinar del Rio province the westernmost province of Cuba after Havana. You know, with the technology, we can know in advance that the hurricane is coming, you know, get prepared, you know, so as to try to reduce the possible impact of it. But there is not much we can do to change this reality, you know, and that's something we have to deal with here in the Caribbean. Canada, where most of you are coming from, you don't have this problem with the hurricanes. You have the problems maybe with the snow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember uh, not long ago, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you know, there were many flights from Canada that were delayed and canceled because of the snowstorm. You know, it was actually very bad. At that time, yeah, that was around Christmas time, you know, and then in Cuba at that time, it was colder but let's say not that bad, you know, as Canada can be. I remember, you know, there were flights that were canceled, you know, and they could come maybe three days later. But now hopefully things are getting better now, and now it's still cold in Canada, but the flights are more on time. So now, as we continue our drive, towards Havana, here further ahead, we're going to drive through Matanza City. You know, Matanza City is the name of the capital city of the province, with the same name. You know, it's a city around 30 kilometers away from Baradero. So there are also many people from here who work in Baradero. Baradero, as I was telling you, very touristic, you know, many hotels and just a few inhabitants, so they need people to go and work in there. We can say that, uh, let's say, Matanzas has a population of around 150,000 inhabitants. It's indeed the biggest city in the province of Matanzas. And let's say this city is called Matanzas, and do you know what does it mean? in English. Matanzas in English means slaughter. And then you can wonder how come the name of this city, that scary name, you know, that is related to a piece of history, you know. Historians say that when the Spanish go to this area, there were many Aboriginal settlements, you know, and the Spanish committed a big slaughter of Indians, of Aboriginal people, in order to be able to colonize the place. So that's actually the origin of this scary name. But you know, it's a beautiful city that is usually called the city of rivers and city of bridges. There are three different rivers that go through the city and the bridges are all over. In the way to Havana today, uh, we're going to see, you know, the, uh, the highest bridge of Cuba, which is Bakunayawa Bridge, 112 meters high. And then at the beginning of the city, we're going to find the first river, which is called Canibar. And let's say, um, Canibar is an Aboriginal name. 
there were many aboriginal settlements all along this area back in the colonial times so the river still keeps the aboriginal name from before Closer to me, I try to help you get it faster because when they see many people at the time. By using a special yeast, later distilled through steel columns, and what we obtain is kept in big barrels made out of white oak. The longer we keep it in the barrels, the darker it gets. That's why you can see that the bottle of rum may be white, may be yellow, may be brown, because that depends on the aging process. In theory, you know the white rum is to mix, to make cocktails. 
and the dark rum is to drink pure of with ice blocks. But in the Cuban culture regarding rum drinking, everything is possible. You can see people, for example, let's say preparing cocktails with dark rum as they do in the Piña Colada bar. <laughs> of people drinking, let's say, white rum pure, but in theory, it's all the way around. Yeah? You know, another important product, you know, in the Cuban culture, another important Cuban export product are the Cuban cigars. And let's say Cuban cigars are said to be the best in the world. They have a name, the reputation. And normally when people think about cigars, they think about Havana. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Yes. Even the word Habanos comes from Havana. And you can wonder why. You remember I was talking to you about Pinar del Rio. Pinar del Rio province, the westernmost province of Cuba that was affected by Hurricane Yang, you know, uh, last, last year. This is the province, you know, in Cuba where we get the biggest soil or the biggest um, tobacco production in Cuba. But the biggest cigar factories are located in Havana. Factories like Corona, where they roll around 25,000 cigars in one day. Among the most popular Cuban cigars, you know, we have Cohiba, Monte Cristo, and Romeo and Juliet. These are the best three. What is the origin of these names? I will tell you a little bit about it. Cohiba is an Aboriginal name. That's the name given by our ancestors to the cigars they used to roll because the Aboriginal people used to cultivate tobacco and they used to roll their own cigars, they call Cohibas. The second most popular Cuban cigar is Monte Cristo. The third, Romeo and Juliet. These are book names and that is related to a tradition in cigar factories. In every cigar factory there is a reader. Somebody who is supposed to read the newspaper to keep these people updated and later they may read a book. They read these books in the factory, the Count of Monte Cristo and Romeo and Julia from Shakespeare, and they decided to name the new cigars after the books they were reading. So now you know the origin of the names of the three best Cuban cigars. You know, in order to roll a cigar, there are five different leaves and they come from two different tobacco plants. One of them is cultivated in the shade, one of them in the sun. The one cultivated in the shade provides the cigars with the last leaf, what you call in English the wrapper, which is softer, elastic. You know, the inner leaves are the most important ones, you know, and they come from the other tobacco plant that is cultivated in the sun. The one which is lower, you know, next to the floor, is you know, one which is greasy, you know, has some humidity, and that is used in the cigar, you know, for the burning capacity. The second one in the middle is for the aroma of the cigar. You know, and the one which is higher in the tobacco plant is the one which is more exposed to the sun, that is normally darker. That's the one that provides the cigar with the strength. These three are rolled within the fourth leaf, which is the binder and later they are pressed. The monument to Antonio, uh, sorry, to Maximo Gomez from the Dominican Republic. He fought for the Cuban independence against Spain in the 19th century. There on the other side of the bay, you can see fortresses that were made to defend the city against pirates. Nowadays, they have become, all of them, museums. Inside this big fortress there, you know, every night at 9 p.m., they shot a cannon. That was a tradition back in the colonial times, you know. They would shot a cannon there, that that would be the sign that the city gates were going to get closed.
explain for me. San Francisco de Assisi. Here we find the former Franciscan convent from the 16th century. Nowadays it's the museum for religious arts, but the building and the square are still called San Francisco de Assisi. <coughs> this square was very important back in the colonial times for the train, with a very good location next to the harbor. Nowadays, it's another public square here in many important buildings, like for example, National Customs on the Restoration. This is, yeah, as I told you, many Canadians say it looks like old Quebec City, but you know, uh, bigger. Yeah, the bigger. Get up, bro. What is that? You see, my friends, uh, here you will see many people like the gentleman here selling this kind of uh, chips they call chivirico, made out of sweet potato with sugar. In your culture, you are more used to salty chips. But remember, we Cubans, we have um, a big history with the sugar cane that was introduced by the Spanish. Mm -hmm. And we are sugar addicts. We use sugar for almost everything. That's part of everyday life for us. We know it's not healthy, but you know, so is our culture. <laughs> he sell it, you know, in case somebody wants to have, you can come to him. Let's say, uh, here at Old Havana, it's out of free area. That's why you could see the cannons facing down, the symbol of peace, cannon balls, you know? A few cars could come here, maybe like the firefighters, you know, or an ambulance, you know? But it's in general out of free area, so I have to try to keep it as original as possible. Right here in front of us, we find a canalization implemented in Havana at the end of the 16th century. Here we brought water from... You may see many children on the streets, you know, because uh, let's say it's the weekend, you know, they don't have to go to school till let's say uh, Monday now. Monday. Here, Monday. for example, there is a primary school over there, and today it's closed, you know, very quiet. If you come here in a regular day, you can feel the school in there. <laughs> yes, in the middle there, to your right, you see? Ah. The door closed on the other side. You see, my friends, uh, we are now in another square. The name of this square, Plaza Vieja. That means in English, all square. This square was finished around the year 1559. And at the beginning, it was called New Square. Later, they built newer squares 
a new square became old square. From 19, uh, 1950 to 1990, it was used as a parking lot. And later, it was restored and taken back into its original appearance. I like this square a lot because here you can see a mixture of different styles. You can see, for example, a new It's a big cooking too. From the beginning of the 20th century. You can see the decoration based on nature. You can see natural figures over there. You can mm. see plants, animals, birds, Hi. see? That's actually distinctive in the Art Nouveau style. I know it's On the other side, Did you have You see, my friends, we a unity, and we have this monument there. This way, please. No, that's the other American writer used to stay for long periods from 1932 to 1939. Always staying in the room 511 by the top. In 1939, Hemingway decided to settle down in Havana, so he bought a house in the outskirts of the city. Hello, my friends. You see, we are now right in front of, in front of the former palace for the Spanish governors back in the colonial times. That now has become the city museum. We are going to visit now. Right in front of it, there is a wooden space. There are wood.
is chilo. My God, go find the big soap. Hello, my friends. Take a look. We are now on another square. Let's go on this side. You know, I don't want to block the traffic. Yeah. We are now on another square, and this is a very special one. It's called Plaza de Armas, or Arm Square. It was a military square back in the colonial times. For military parades, military exercises of the Spanish troops. Later it was widened, and it would become the most important public square in all Havana. In the middle, a very nice monument of Carlos Manuel de Céspedes. You know, a local hero in the independence wars against Spain.
We have more time to do other activities. And number two, the way it consists, take a look. Rum, coffee, and cigars were Cuban export products from the colonial times. Not now, that's not new. They were part of the treasures, you know, that were exported abroad, you know? And that was the way this, this shop was conceived as a boat. Mm -hmm. There you can even see, you know, a boat. Okay. You know, like the ones, you know, that were used back in the colonial times to ship all these things abroad, especially to Europe. Now here we see a collection of rum. One small Havana Club, the most popular Cuban rum. But there are others, like, let's say, Santiago de Cuba, made in the former Bacardi Rum Factory in Santiago de Cuba. Legendario, made here in Havana. Black Tears, that's the name. Mm -hmm. Hello, my friends. Uh, this is, in my point of view, the nicest square in all Havana. You see, this is called the Cathedral Square. There we find the cathedral. You know, the cathedral was finished in the year 7077, made with Baroque style, like the city museum where we were. You know, the cathedral is still in use. Big masses are made here, especially on Sundays. You know, it's a very nice cathedral. And Baroque style was also a style that was used all around here. They were housed for rich families that later would become touristic buildings. As I told you, this is a very special square because all buildings are the same style. There is a kind of balance. 
at night with the lights, this very nice colonial atmosphere. If we take the people away for a minute, we can think we are back in time. It's a very nice atmosphere. When the American writer used to go for the daiquiri with sugar, lemon juice, crushed ice, rum. You know, he used to say, My mojito y la bodeguita del medio, but my daiquiri here.
del Prado is the connection between Capitol Building and the Sea Promenade on the other side. As we continue our drive, you know, here in the next corner to the right, you're going to see Hotel Sevilla. Full, put it in a jar. 